Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on an introduction to the McNamara's test. As always, if you find this video to be helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. McNamara's test is a non-parametric test, also known as a distribution-free test. It can be used when you have repeated measures with just two related groups, for example, a pretest and a post-test, and the dependent variable is measured dichotomously. That is, it's the nominal level of measurement with only two levels. So, for example, yes or no, or zero or one. We can think of McNamara's test as being similar to a dependent samples t-test, otherwise known as a paired samples t-test, except with a dichotomous outcome variable. With a dependent samples t-test, the dependent variable or outcome variable must be measured at the continuous level of measurement, that is interval or ratio levels of measurement. The McNamara's test, you have a dichotomous dependent variable. We can also think of McNamara's test as a within subjects chi-square. If you consider the chi-square test of independence, just like with McNamara's test, you have a two by two contingency table. Except in the case of McNamara's test, you use this only with repeated measures. A chi-square would be with unrelated groups. McNamara's test would be with related groups. So to provide an example of when we might use McNamara's test, consider that you're at a mental health agency and your job there is to conduct research and to deliver treatment designed to reduce or eliminate the symptoms of substance use disorder. And you have developed a specialized treatment that you believe increases a participant's confidence in their ability to be abstinent from substances. So before you deliver your specialized treatment, you ask all the participants the same question. Do you believe you'll be abstinent from substances within a month? So the possible responses to that question are yes or no. All the participants respond to that question, then they are given the treatment, and then at the conclusion of the treatment, they're asked the same question again. And again, the responses to that question can only be yes or no. So you're left with a pretest with yes or no responses, a post-test with yes or no responses, and the responses that you have collected are to the same exact question. So each participant has been measured two times. That represents a repeated measure. In this case, it's a pretest, post-test design. So let's consider the possible outcomes from this type of design using this example with the substance use disorder. Let's say that the participants that responded yes, let's refer to them as confident, and the participants that responded no, not confident. Here you only have four possible combinations. A participant starts as confident, and they receive the treatment, and after the treatment's over, they're still confident. So they respond yes, they're treated and they still respond yes. A participant is not confident. They respond no at the time of the pretest. They're treated and they still respond no after the treatment. So they're not confident before or after the treatment. These two categories, the participants that go from yes to yes and no to no, that have no change. They're called concordant cells. If we think about that two by two contingency table, in the cases of a yes and yes response and a no and no response, these participants have not changed. They are concordant cells on that contingency table. Now let's consider the other possible responses. Somebody can go from having confidence and then have the treatment and then not be confident. So they could answer yes be treated, and then answer no. That would be contrary to what we would want. We wouldn't have designed a treatment that would lower confidence. However, that could still happen. The last possible outcome is where a client is not confident. They answer no. They are treated with a counseling treatment, 
and then at the end they are confident. So they go from no to yes. And of course this would be a desired outcome. These two types of responses, yes to no and no to yes, they would go in discordant cells on the two by two contingency table. Discordant cells is where we have a change, where we move from one level of the dependent variable to the other. With the McNamara's test, we're only interested in the discordant cells. The concordant cells do not go into the calculation, only the times when there was a change. So the null hypothesis for a McNamara's test is the number of discordant cells is equal. Now let's take a look at the elements of a McNamara's test. For a McNamara's test, we have one independent variable. It has two related groups. And again, this is a within subjects design. This is the same participant being measured twice instead of different participants being measured once. For McNamara's test, you also have just one dependent variable. It's a special case of the nominal level of measurement referred to as dichotomous. So it's a nominal variable with only two levels. And these levels are mutually exclusive. A participant can't respond with both a yes and a no, for example. They have to either choose one level or the other. Now let's take a look at the assumption for McNamara's test. Now again, McNamara's test is a non-parametric test. So as with most non-parametric tests, we don't expect a restrictive set of assumptions. And that holds true here for McNamara's test. We need the participants here to be randomly selected from the population. The participants are independent from one another. And the number of discordant pairs should be greater than or equal to 30. So overall, a fairly flexible test as we would expect from a non-parametric statistic. However, we need to exercise caution with this assumption regarding the discordant pairs. So you could have a fairly large sample, using that example with the counseling treatment for substance use disorder. You could have a large sample of participants who answered yes at the pretest and yes at the post-test, or no on the pretest and no in the post-test, but those would be concordant pairs. So that wouldn't help you meet this assumption for McNamara's test. In the McNamara's test, you need to have at least 30 discordant pairs, 30 participants who moved from yes to no or no to yes. Again, the concordant pairs aren't even part of the calculation with the McNamara's test. It's only interested in the change. And I just want to note here as well, I have no assumption of normality noted here. There is no assumption of normality for McNamara's test. The assumption of normality is fairly common for parametric statistics. For example, the paired samples t-test, but it is not an assumption here for McNamara's test, which is a non-parametric statistic. So I hope you found this introduction to McNamara's test to be helpful. Thanks for watching.